Hey guys and welcome to a new video and I think this background right here perfectly fits the theme of this video because today we're going to talk about 4k. We're going to talk about if 4k is really worth it. Is buying 4k blu-rays really worth it? Is buying a 4k tv really worth it? Or is it just fine to buy any random blu-ray just watch it on normal full HD or is it even fine to just go ahead and buy a DVD still? Well today we're going to talk about it. I have been a really big movie enthusiast for probably uh, four, no actually over five years now and I've watched movies since my childhood but since five years I've really gotten into watching movies, watching a lot of different movies, old movies, trying to see what is good, what are stereotypes, how a movie is made, I'm really into watching movies. Now. When I was a child, I remember, I don't have it here, but I remember watching movies on VHS. Some of you, maybe younger people watching this, will be like, what is the VHS? I mean, is this this like horror movie that was released some time ago? No, it's not. But they use VHS in that movie. So VHS is a really old like tape version of where you had the movie. So now I'm not gonna go into full detail onto what that is and how it's made. It doesn't really matter. All that matters was the quality on VHS was not really great. Even there is even a little story where Disney at first actually refused to put their movies onto VHS because they thought that the quality that the VHS produced was so bad that just the movie deserved more. And they tried then actually to put their movies on VHS and it was a massive success. And this is why actually they then put their movies onto VHS. Not because they thought that VHS had such a great quality, which it really hasn't, let's be honest. Um, because it made money, that's why they did it. And after VHS, there was an evolution. The evolution was called DVD. And this is kind of the thing I really grew up with. And I actually have this DVD here, which is from my childhood, Spawnicle 3. Uh, like, this is like 360p, 400p classic standard definition, essentially. So. Yeah, and you can watch it and I would actually argue sometimes it looks fine, but it's not that great of quality. I mean, yeah, but DVDs. Later on, this came. There was the big fight between HD DVD and Blu-ray, you know, and HD DVD lost and Blu-ray prevailed. Blu-ray, full HD format, looks really good. Still to this day looks really good and is being sold all around the world. And some years ago, something emerged and stirred up the industry, and that was 4K Blu-rays. Now, 4K is the net new big thing. Till some time ago, Full HD was like the thing to go, like the mainstream resolution everyone had. Nowadays, I would argue 4K is getting more and more mainstream. So the question that probably most of you have is, should I switch to 4K? Is it really worth it? So I think before we go ahead, and talk about the 4K Blu-rays, we're gonna talk about 4K TVs or 4K in general. So I wanna start this off by talking about the TVs, the 4K TVs in which you can watch your movies. Now a big thing that is really important to know, which probably many people don't know, is that it's not enough to just have a 4K TV to watch 4K Blu-rays. Now you might say, what? Well, you need a 4K Blu-ray player as well. I mean, you can even see it down there. So you have to buy 4K Blu-ray player as well, which also costs quite a lot, I think over 100 bucks still, which again, is actually quite expensive these days because I like bought it for 250 or something. But anyway, you need both. So if you have a 4K TV and a 4K Blu-ray player, you're ready to go. All right, so I bought this actually recently. I've gotten this as a present from my parents my new 4K TV. Till some weeks ago actually, or even some months ago, I had a full HD TV from 2008 and I was completely fine with it. And I, like many people thought, why would you need anything else? And I love movies, I really love it. And I've seen a 4K Super HD TV, uh, no, it's Super Ultra HD TV at my friend's house. And yes, it looks incredible, but I always thought, why would I buy a new TV? Mine looks good, mine looks fine. I really like it. Then there came an Amazon sale and this TV normally here that you see costs a thousand bucks. So it's quite an expensive TV. I mean, if you think about it, when 4K TVs came out, thousand bucks was like a normal 4K. Nowadays you can get 4K TVs for like 300 bucks, which is really, really cheap. It's probably one of the reasons why they're getting mainstream now, because they're getting affordable. 
So this TV normally costs a thousand bucks, which is a lot nowadays. Like the really good TVs cost a thousand bucks now. And I got this for almost half the price, like 500 something, which is incredible in my opinion. And this TV that you can see right here, just as a reference, has HDR10, Dolby Vision, has Dolby Atmos, I'm gonna get to that, and has the NanoCell technology from LG. And I always thought my Full HD TV is fine, I don't need more. And then I opened Netflix. And this is one of the things many people forget. They always think if I wanna watch 4K, I need to buy like those expensive Blu-rays. No, like even I think Amazon Prime is starting to do this, but like uh, Netflix is like on a whole nother level. Because when you buy a Netflix subscription, there are three different types. You have the standard definition subscription, anyone buy it this still but anyway you have the HD type which just has full HD which is great and costs I think nine bucks which is really cheap and actually I think it got more expensive now probably like 12 bucks still fine though and then there is the 4k like the, the best like um, subscription that you can have we can watch all the movies that are available on 4k 4k and I didn't know this but Netflix actually offers Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos on streaming. I didn't know this is possible actually, to be honest. I mean, streaming is quite new to me. I just started like one and a half years ago to really stream movies. And I never, well, since I didn't have a 4K TV thought about streaming 4K, I actually thought my internet wouldn't be possible to do this. And all of this became irrelevant because Netflix showed me it's possible and it looks amazing. I mean, guys, I've watched uh, like a movie, uh, how is it called? I've watched Polar on there with Mads Mikkelsen. Now, the movie isn't really that incredible, but the quality, I was astonished that a streaming site was able to make this movie look incredible. Like the Dolby Atmos, like the Dolby Vision, it looked incredible. And then there I watched one other documentary and I recommend this to you. If you just bought a 4K TV and it has HDR10 Dolby Vision, please watch Our Earth. Please watch this documentary. When you see this quality, you will be in shock and awe. It is incredible. This is the best 4K HDR I have ever seen in my entire life and it is stream. That was just incredible to me. I mean, it looked photorealistic. I just watch it. I can't even like describe it or show it to you because why a lens of a camera, it will not look as great as it is when you just see it with your own eyes. It's incredible. So obviously 4K looks better. Surprise, surprise, right? Um, but what many people get wrong is when you buy, when I buy a 4K Blu-ray, it's not the resolution that matters to me. I would actually argue, while well, there is a difference, of course you can see that it's sharper, you see that, but it's not the thing that really elevates the 4K Blu-ray over normal Blu-rays. Let me just get the other one here. It's not the 4K resolution that elevates the matrix over the normal Blu-ray of the matrix. It is this thing here, the HDR. Guys, I tell you, HDR is one of the best inventions of the last years when it comes to watching movies. The contrasts on those movies, the blacks, the highlights, it looks incredible. As I told you, with Our Earth, for example, when there, when like light shines through the, the blue color of the sea, trust me, I I was the same like everyone else. You probably now looking at this, you're saying, ha, uh, my, my full HD TV still looks great. I said the same. Really, I said the same till I got my TV. You haven't seen shit yet, honestly. I mean, when you see this in HDR 10, it looks incredible. Now, as I told you, HDR makes the real difference. Whether that is Matrix, whether that is... Yeah, I know you're gonna scold me for having this movie in 4K. Batman v Superman. Whether it's Gladiator, which looks incredible in 4K. Whether it's Avengers, where the normal Blu-ray already looks incredible on a 4K TV, the 4K looks even better. Whether it is Hexo Rich, where the night scenes look really incredible, it's always the HDR for me that makes the difference visual-wise. Those 4K Blu-rays have a better contrast ratio, they have a better color reproduction. 
normal Blu-rays look incredible. Those TVs are smart. They have even processors in there. They're smart TVs and Netflix and stuff and stuff and so on and on and so on and forth. And it, it like it processes stuff. It tries to upscale your HD automatically to 4K so that it still looks good. And trust me, it looks amazing. For example, I had, as I said before, the Avengers Blu-ray, normal Blu-ray, for a long time. And I don't know, like, four or five years ago I watched this Blu-ray when I bought it on my full HD TV and it looked fine back then I didn't really like care that much about like quality I think 4k wasn't even in my mind back then but I could remember how it looked and then I watched the same Blu-ray because I didn't yet have the 4k version of Avengers on my 4k TV I was shocked I was sitting there with my study colleague and I was thinking how does this, how can this Blu-ray look so much better? Because it's really simple actually. The TV first of all upscales it so it looks really amazing and you have this great color reproduction. It just, it takes everything out of the Blu-ray. Everything that the Blu-ray has to offer suddenly can be used. Because my full HD TV surely couldn't use all of that, all of the quality and color that the Blu-ray had. Because back then when I bought, got it from my parents in 2008, I didn't really care, I just wanted to play my PS3 in full HD, I mean, that was all I cared about. So, normal Blu-rays, HD content, will look way better on your 4K TVs. Yes, it's actually true. And then there is one more thing, one more thing, yeah, like Apple. It's the sound. Now, I told you, this TV has Dolby Atmos. Now, many people probably look at me and will be like, all the Atmos in the TV, what, what, I mean, do you have like a big speaker setup, like seven speakers at the back, two at the side, you know, those kind of speaker setups that make the whole building shake when something explodes? No, I don't, I just, I would love to, I don't have the money and I probably would annoy my whole neighbors with the loudness. I would love to, don't have the money for it, but I think I don't even want to right now, because this TV has Dolby Atmos built in. Now. You probably will be as skeptic as I, because I was the same. I looked at Amazon, I saw the amazing offer, HDR10, Dolby Vision, and then I saw Dolby Atmos, and I was like, that is awesome, but does it support Dolby Atmos? Does it have Dolby Atmos? And then I watched some reviews, and yes, it has Dolby Atmos sound. And I, like you, I was like, how, I mean, how can this sound? And when this TV actually arrived, I was more excited to hear the sound than to hear to, to see the image because I just I couldn't imagine how Dolby Atmos could work inside of this really slim TV because this is a big problem with TVs nowadays because they get so incredibly thin that you just cannot put any good speakers in there anymore because you know there's no space to put in any more great bass or any great sounding speakers in there but this TV does a great thing it's very slim at the beginning and at the end it gets like double the size probably even more actually to accommodate for those big speakers and there's like a big array of speakers on the whole bottom of the TV and guys if you ask them well how good is the effect because obviously if you have like a speaker setup like I before said like this insane speaker setup I have no doubt that your Dolby Atmos experience will be way better but if you ask me how good is the Dolby Atmos if you just have this TV like I have I was watching Triple Frontier on Netflix and right at the beginning I was sitting there and I was a bit confused because behind me was this weird sound like someone talking like a, a crowd talking behind me and I turned around and closed the window thinking something people were talking outside you probably know where I'm getting at already I turned back turn on the TV again and again there was this sound and I didn't even get it then I I was like, what is that? I mean, that's just weird. Are they talking so loud that I hear it through the window? And then I realized I stopped the, the movie and suddenly the sound was gone. I turned it on, it was back, I turned it off. And then I realized it was the movie. It was the Dolby Atmos. The TV tricked me so good that I thought the sounds behind me were real. I mean, take that in. And this is coming from a built-in speaker. And also in Triple Frontier, plane was passing by in the scene. I could hear it. I could hear the plane passing by. 
and you know what even if you say oh, I, this is just this fancy stuff of things passing by uh, hearing things behind me i don't need that trust me once you heard it you really want it and it's not even like this I mean, this is just like the icing on the cake the stuff that i love is just the overall speaker quality in this tv is incredible the best uh, the clearness of the sound and just the punch that the sounds have when something explodes it's just awesome for a built-in speaker in the tv i just can recommend this i will link you this tv by the way because i think this is the best tv i've ever seen yet and i don't know if the offer still is there on amazon but if you can get this tv for like half the price i mean no question to ask you just just buy it so sound wise it does make a difference and most normal blu-rays do not have Dolby atmos on there and even if you think it doesn't make a difference trust me when you hear this when you experience this for the first time when something passes by in the movie and it passes by your ear in your living room you will be like you will be amazed trust me because i was as well so I think already from this video, from what I've discussed, you probably know my stance on the topic. 4K, 4K TVs, watching in 4K, buying 4K Blu-rays, it makes sense. Now there's only one argument I understand, and the argument is 4K Blu-rays are expensive. Yes, they are. I'm not trying to argue against that, it's quite expensive. Some movies cost 30 bucks, which is really insane, but it's getting better. It's actually getting better. The movies are getting cheaper and cheaper. For example, this movie here, Gladiator, looks amazing on 4K. I imported it over the UK, because for some reason, like if you import it from the UK to Austria, 4K Blu-rays are cheaper, it's really weird. And like they're a lot cheaper, like here in Austria, the 4K Blu-ray of Gladiator costs over 30 bucks for some reason, or around 30 bucks. And like in the UK, it costs like 18 bucks, which is actually really cheap for a 4K Blu-ray, almost approaching normal Blu-ray pr price. I don't know why, but I mean, I accept it, I buy it. So 4K Blu-rays sometimes go already under 20 bucks, and normally they are around 22 bucks. So it's getting better and better. 4K is getting cheaper and cheaper because it's getting more mainstream and mainstream. The same with the TVs. Back then, as I said, 4K TVs started at a thousand bucks. Now you can get them for 300 bucks around that price. So the more affordable 4K gets, the more people can buy it, the more people will get it. And that is why I really recommend 4K right now. I think that if you love movies, if you really adore movies, if you want to see your favorite movies in the best possible quality, 4K Blu-rays are the way to go. They look incredible, they sound incredible. Now, one last disclaimer. There are, however, some Blu-rays, some 4K Blu-rays, which can be disappointing. This is why I recommend the YouTube channel Brass Tax. He does 4K Blu-ray reviews and he talks about the picture quality, the sound quality, and just addresses this, rates this, and it's just great, because you can watch it first before buying and spending your money on a 4K Blu-ray. Because you think twice when buying a Blu-ray that costs 20 bucks instead of a Blu-ray that costs just nine bucks. And just this channel is great for looking if the Blu-ray is really worth it quality-wise or not. Because there are Blu-rays like this here, The Greatest Showman, great visuals, great. And it has Dolby Atmos and I was excited because I don't know if you know this movie but there are some songs in there which I really like and I, I went to one song called The Other Side and I switched it on, I turned the volume up and I was getting ready to have a great sounding rendition of the song. And then something really peculiar happened. I was sitting there and they were talking still before the song begins and it was great. It sounded great, loud and everything. And then the song switched on and the sound quality degraded. It was like suddenly there was another sound clip in there, like they just put in the CD soundtrack. It was quieter, noticeably quieter than everything else. So if I turn on the volume suddenly when they would talk again, it would be incredible loud and when they played the song again, it was more silent again. It was weird. I don't know what they did there. It didn't sound that great. I mean, if that's Dolby Atmos, then oh my god, it's really bad. But it, it surely wasn't. I don't know what they were doing there. I, I have no idea. So there are Blu-rays that sometimes miss the mark. So you just have to do your research. But in general, 
Like this is one example, I and mean, even then, the, like the visuals are amazing. And apart from that, it's a great full paper array. There are so many great examples. Matrix looks incredible on 4K. Gladiator, incredible on 4K. Batman v Superman, I know you're gonna uh, like roast me for having this 4K Blu-ray. Looks great and sounds incredible. One of the best, if not the best 4K Blu-ray sounding in Dolby Atmos I have seen yet. Then we have Hexo Ridge, incredible in 4K. The night scenes look incredible. You have Avengers, looks incredible in 4K. There are so many examples or even when I pick this out, last but not least, Juan Wick. John Wick is, first of all, an incredible movie, watch it. Um, looks on 4K incredible. So there are so many great examples, guys, for great movies. And what I want to say with this is, yes, 4K is the future. 4K is worth it. Buying a 4K TV now in 2019 is worth it. Just do your research and think about the things I told you. HDR10 is worth it. If you find a TV which is in your price range and has HDR10, has maybe even, that's like a big plus. If it has it, it's incredible because you will have great sound. If it has Dolby Atmos in there, buy it. But HDR10 is really important in my opinion. So you should look for HDR10 TVs. They're not even that expensive anymore. And just buy a 4K TV, it will be really worth it, trust me. And another thing actually, this is like a 49 inch TV. I tell you guys, I had a way smaller TV back then. Having like this big TV, even though my room isn't that big, is really awesome. <laughs> it makes watching movies really great. So guys, 4K is really worth it. I can fully recommend 4K, buying 4K Blu-rays. I can fully recommend buying 4K TVs, do your research. Try to find some sales if possible and you will have nothing but great times and great entertainment sessions with your friends when watching on a 4K TV. This is me, David, signing out. Have a good one.